No, I don't waste no time What's going on guys and welcome to a new video. So for those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Joshua Daniel George, a digital marketer and online coach. I own a social media marketing agency here in the Netherlands and alongside that I also teach you guys on how to do the same. So how to start an agency, how to scale your agency and live life on your own. Tims. Now, for those of you that are interested in the coaching, I will leave everything linked in the description box down below. Literally for €117 Euros a month, I will take you by the hand and push your agency to the next level. Um, you will basically get access to me via WhatsApp. You will get access to the group calls, which you know basically um, is a Zoom call every single Sunday where we basically just you know share each other's screen and look at you know how we can improve your ads how i can help you with your outreach and so on and so forth you also get access to lifestyle design mastery which is my online course on how to build your own social media marketing agency okay now with that plug out of the way um basically i was supposed to record a video today about facebook ads and how you can basically you know start as a complete beginner with Facebook ads and then after the video uh, basically feel like you sort of know your way around uh, the Facebook business manager. This is going to be quite a long video around the hour mark um, but yesterday I actually had to go to the UK. Uh, I had to get an early morning flight uh, to literally sign a couple of documents and then fly back the same day, which was extremely tiring. Um, long story short, I purchased property in the UK a while back and uh, the property is almost finished. Uh, this year, a Q3, I think off the top of my head, it will be completely finished, but obviously, you know, I will need to get a mortgage on that. I won't be paying it off completely with my own cash. So I need to get a mortgage for that, but you know, for, for me to be able to have a mortgage, I need to open another bank account. Um, so a lot of paperwork, a lot of things that I need to sort out. It's all out the way, it's all done with, but today I'm feeling very fatigued because I got home late last night. So rather than filming that video, I thought, um, you know, I'll just basically film a quick sit down video with you guys. And then while scrolling through my Instagram DMs, someone asked me the question of uh, what it's like signing a whale client, basically. So a client that is more than, um, you know, 5K a month, for example. And what the differences are with having a high ticket client compared to just your local clients, you know, your local dealerships, your local spas, etc. So in October of 2019, I signed my biggest client to date, which was 10K a month, and then also 15% um, commission on the um, like the revenue, basically. It's a streaming software. Um, unfortunately, and um, like it really bums me out that I can't actually talk about it, but um, I can't mention any names or anything like that. We've signed like quite serious um, agreements and like non-disclosure documents and contracts, etc. that we can't actually name anything about the client. We can't mention it. We can't even, um, like literally, we, we can't tell anyone that we're basically working for this client because you know it's quite a serious thing okay so we ran out of battery there but we're back again so yeah like i said guys um you know it's quite a it's quite a serious contract so we won't be naming any names or anything like that but um that was the biggest client that i have ever signed um you know for my agency for social media marketing or media buying is probably the more correct term for it um it was very much performance marketing so um, basically what we are doing is like not really focusing on branding or anything like that. It's literally short term, how to get as many conversions and as many sales as possible, which is completely different than what I'm used to. I'm used to building a brand, you know, building up uh, the page likes on Facebook and selling products and, and stuff like that. So uh, yeah, completely different, but I want to basically spend this video explaining the pros and cons of signing a client of this size. Um, first thing I noticed in the first few weeks of working with this client is that everything gets documented, okay? So everything you say is literally set in stone. So um, let's say for example, you, you um, like there's, there's four different landing page variations, for example, and you pick one because your gut feeling says that that one will convert better, okay? And then you say um, landing page three will probably be best. And 
when you start testing and landing page three isn't the one that converts best or doesn't perform well, then you're the one to blame. They will come back to you and say, listen, you said landing page three would convert. You know, can you please, you know, clear up why landing page three isn't converting? Okay, so they see you as the expert, you are brought in um, as the expert, and because of the size of your retainer, obviously, they expect you to perform miracles, which, um, you know, is great because you get the respect that you, you finally get the respect that you deserve, basically, but if you, you know, F up, then it's all on you as well. Second thing I noticed is that everything happens during a meeting, okay? Anything you can think of will happen during a meeting, and because basically our office is on the same floor as this client. Um, long story, basically we hired office space from this client as well, and uh, we are basically on the same floor as them. So anything you want, even if it's something simple like, can we change the custom event on the, like the lead page, it'll literally be, okay, yeah, let's set up a meeting for quarter past 12, and we'll all get together and discuss it. And you know, for me, that was very frustrating because I'm not a, a big fan of meetings. I think not necessarily a waste of time because obviously you know you do get stuff done, but it just takes a, a lot of a big chunk out of your day basically. Um, so for the last few weeks, I've had meetings at ten, meetings at half past eleven, and a meeting at four. And basically, in between those meetings, I get the rest of my work done. And sometimes I actually struggle to get my own work done, like next to this client, uh, because of the size of those meetings. And in between, you know, I either need to prepare something or during a meeting, you say, you know, I'll get I'll get back to you after the meeting, or I'll send that across to you after the meeting. And then, you know, in between those two meetings, you're basically sending off sending off the details that you promised to send during the meeting. Okay, so um, yeah, it's basically like enterprise level, you know, when you sign a client of that stature, it, it is all enterprise, okay? Everything happens with checklists, everything needs to be um, defined, everything needs to be um, accounted for. So when you set up an advertisement and the campaign gets disapproved, they will set up a checklist, okay? And the checklist will say, um, okay, step one, do this, step, one, step two, do this, and you need to follow that checklist. And if you if you make a mistake, then they will look at the checklist and see you know where you went wrong. And if they notice you went wrong somewhere, then you know again it's all on you. Okay. So because of the size of a client like this with a retainer that big, you need to base you are responsible for everything. Okay. Every mistake you made will be documented because everything gets documented anyway because of the size of the company the amount of people that are working on the same project, everything needs to be done with checklists and documented because otherwise it'll just be chaos. And this is completely different than what I usually do, where it's just me doing the media buying. I set up the ads, I you know create the own, I create my own graphics, I set up my own landing page and so on and so forth. Here we have a team, we have one person doing the graphics, we have one person doing the landing pages, we have one person coding the landing page, we have one person uh, doing the media buying, we have one person doing the checklist and looking over what the media buyer has set up, we have one person managing the ecosystems, which is basically like the Facebook uh, accounts, we have another person who manages the PayPals, and like it's just a lot of different people working on the same um, task, which obviously is great, you know, it, it's good to work in a group, but um, it's just different than what I was used to. And guys, like, I don't mean to like shit all over this client. Like, I, I'm loving like working with this client. It, this is literally just me explaining what my experiences is are with a client of this size compared to other clients that I've got. Okay, so I don't mean this in a bad way. I'm just explaining the differences. So, for example, if you are a very structured person and you like checklists, then this will be, you know, all you. I'm a very structured guy. I like working with structure. I have to-do lists for almost everything. Um, but this did get to the point where there were so many checklists that had actually slowed me down and setting up um, a campaign, which would normally consist of anywhere between 100 and 150 ad variations, um, would literally take all afternoon because of the amount of checklists and everything that we need to do, okay? Next to that, everything needs to be tracked in every way possible. 
So, you know, we'll have the Facebook tracker, we'll have offline events, we will have Google Analytics, which will be scripted on every single page as well. And then we'll have their own tracking software that tracks everything that we do. And that way, uh, which is, to, this was like one of the greatest things ever because if, for example, the purchase pixel wouldn't fire, we'd still have four other tracking systems to, to fall back on. Or vice versa, if the pixel says we've got seven purchases, we can double check the other trackers to see if that is actually true. Okay, that has been absolutely amazing and um, it's something that I would love to implement uh, with other clients is the offline events and the additional tracking. I think it's their own software. I'm not really sure if they have created it themselves or if it's like an actual software that you can purchase and use. Um, but yeah, additional tracking has been absolutely amazing. Uh, with that said, alongside the tracking, we also did our own tracking with um, like Google Sheets and Google Docs, etc. So every day I had to keep a logbook of everything that I'd done that day, everything that went right and everything that went wrong and the decisions made. When we set up campaigns, we need to send a broadcast email to the whole like Facebook team, which is us, but also like the Google team that work alongside us um, with the campaign we set up, the domain we used, the ad ID, um, the tracking and what ad accounts and business manager we use for all of this. Because there's so many business managers and so many ad accounts, you know, we basically need to keep this structured and every ad account um, has their own domain. So we don't use, for example, www.lifestyledesignmastery.com. We use like lifestyledesign.com, lifestyledesignmastery, services.com, lifestyledesign, masters.com, like all variations of sort of the same website or same domain. And every domain will be spread out across all of the ad accounts. Um, so that was also, again, something that I really had to get used to, all those emails and all those broadcasts and like checklists, etc. cetera. Um, but yeah, in terms of the overall experience, it's amazing to have uh, the freedom that you get with having unlimited budget. Anything you want to test, you can test. And I feel like now, like over these last few months, um, my like I thought, let's say my media buying experience with Facebook and expertise was at a seven out of 10. I feel like I'm now at 9.9, .9 just because of the amount of testing I've done, the amount of stuff that I've done around the media buying, um, audience researchers, you know, using like different types of events, uh, setting up different types of campaigns, you know, scaling the accounts, scaling the campaigns, etc., and like taking into consideration different metrics, for example, with your local, I don't know, let, let's say you're running a campaign for e-commerce, you'll never really run out of audience and you know you never really check things like the frequency it's more so how many clicks am i getting what's the click through rates and how many purchases and now i've literally i think i've used almost every metric that is available on the business manager because everything needs to be tracked and also because of the size of the campaigns you know the countries that we're running in you know we need to basically check everything and make sure that everything is getting documented and getting tracked uh, for example in italy we got mad conversions. It was like insane how many conversions we got. It was profitable. We were making so much money for this client, but the audience ran out. So basically, uh, we, the target audience was 7 million, and we literally targeted everyone that we wanted to target, which meant the frequency went up, which means that the same people that didn't click on the ad um, got to see the ad a second time, which means the CPC will go up, which means the click-through rate goes down, which also means the CPA goes up as well, which meant that over time it was no longer profitable or not as profitable as it first was. And then you've literally just exhausted an entire audience uh, within Facebook in a country, which is something that I've never experienced before and never had to go through. And you know, just to see an ad campaign being run on such a big level was absolutely amazing. And yeah, like I said, even though we ran out of audience in the end, that was just an uh, just that experience alone was has made this whole like the, the, the having this client with it, if you know what I mean. So yeah, I, I'm just rambling on here, guys, but I just wanted to give you guys my experience on it. Um, and in terms of like my overall experience, would I continue working with clients of this size as opposed to smaller clients? It's tough to say. Do you have the you know? having a client this big has its pros and its cons. It's been very stressful over the last few months, working with a client of this size, having to document everything, um, working in the office has also added the additional stress of it. Um, having the costs of an office, 
having a full-time employee now as well uh, for brand Panier has also added you know stress to it because obviously you've got uh, higher costs and which means that your you know your revenue needs to be even higher again for it to be profitable for you and so on and so forth so um, it's been a very stressful period over the last few months um, I do love working with smaller clients because I feel like I'm more in control I could at times it did feel like I was you know in over my head with a client this size um, but yeah like I just if it's possible to have a client like this for a longer period of time or you know at every at any point in my agency always have a big client like this to fall back on then I'd have I'd have that any day of the week absolutely like it's just an amazing experience and like I said the freedom that comes with having a client with unlimited budget to spend is just been the best experience ever in terms of my media buying skills. Like I've developed those skills over the last three months, more so than I have done in the last three years. So like I said, guys, I'm just rambling on here. I just wanted to give my experience. Like this video, if you've got something out of it, comment down below if you have any more questions about working with larger retainers. Um, in terms of, oh, that might be good to add to this before wrapping up this video. In terms of the uh, retainer, we, don't do monthly invoicing uh, in terms of like autom automated. We don't do Stripe, we don't do PayPal, anything like that. We have to send like an old school invoice to their finance department and it gets paid within 14 days or so they say. The last invoice got paid 20 days later. Um, so like 20 days after the invoice was sent, not 20 days after the 14 days. Um, but yeah, so it's it's very corporate and no automated Stripe um, like payments, etc. Um, you know, it's very traditional still. We send the invoice every single month to their finance department and then it gets sorted. Um, and in terms of how we landed the clients, a lot of meetings, um, which also included a meeting in a, on a rooftop in Barcelona, which was a new experience as well. Um, so no Skype, no Skype close gang, no uh, two call close, anything like that. Like it took a few months to get this client um, but every second of it's been worth it, obviously. So, yeah, like I said, guys, I'm wrapping up this video. Like this video if you got something out of it. Subscribe to the channel for more, and I'll see you guys in the next one.